Police launch investigation into Prince Philip crash as it's revealed shaken royal, 97, asked mother and baby is everyone else alright? After he was pulled through roof of Land Rover, but where were his royal protection officers? Police are today investigating the Duke of Edinburgh's role in a horror car smash involving a baby and its mother as it was revealed the Queen's husband was able to walk over and ask them, is everyone else alright? Barrister Roy Warren pulled Prince Philip. 97, from the wreckage of his Land Rover and said the royal told officers he had been dazzled by the sun before the collision near the Sandringham Estate in Norfolk at 2.45 p.m. yesterday. The Kia that plowed into him on the 60 miles per hour A road was carrying a nine-month-old baby, its mother, 28, and another woman, 45, who suffered a broken arm and an injured knee, but the child was unhurt. Norfolk Police told Mail Online today they are treating it like any other road traffic collision, meaning they are likely to question the Duke once he is recovered. A force spokesman said, the incident will be investigated and any appropriate action taken. Buckingham Palace has confirmed Philip has an up-to-date driving license, renewed every three years since he was 70, but it is still unclear if and when he took his test. The Queen will be very annoyed with her husband, according to royal expert Ingrid Seward and Prince Charles said recently he was always worried about his father's determination to keep driving well into his 90s. If Philip was at fault for the smash he could be prosecuted for driving without due care and attention, but could avoid court by surrendering his driving license, Mr. Loophole Nick Freeman has said. Despite the ongoing police investigation and new Land Rover Freelander was delivered to Sandringham today, suggesting Philip is not ready to give up driving just yet. The crash also raises major security questions after it emerged there was no royal protection officer in the car with him and Princess Diana's police bodyguard Ken Wharf told Mail Online today it is a protocol breach and Scotland Yard would have to investigate. Buckingham Palace and the Met both told Mail Online they do not discuss royal security. Roy Warren, 75, was driving home from hospital with his wife Victoria, 72 who had just been given the all-clear from breast cancer, when he saw the Duke's car tumbling across the road. He helped free the conscious but very shaken and shocked royal through the 4 by 4 sunroof as the Duke shouted, My legs. Where should I put my legs? Mr. Warren said, He, Philip, wasn't rude. He was very shaken and he went and asked, Is everyone else alright? Don't. He's a very brave man. He didn't make a big fuss about it. He added, he is lucky to be alive. I saw the Duke's car careering, tumbling across the road. It ended up on the other side, having rolled right over. It was an astonishing escape for everyone. People could have been killed. The impact was enormous. Mr. Warren said he wasn't sure where the Duke's security detail had been but added that police arrived on the scene in a different car very quickly, once he had pulled Philip out. As Prince Philip recovers at Sandringham, it has emerged Philip is believed to have pulled out of a sign road, coming from Sandringham House, onto the busy A149 where the Kia, traveling at up to 60 miles per hour, struck his side of the 4x4 in a so-called T-bone smash. It is not known where he was going but he enjoys visiting friends in the area and going to local shops. His Land Rover was flipped onto the passenger side and then slid across the carriageway before somersaulting back onto the driver's side and coming to a halt on a grass verge. Philip was pulled out of the sunroof by driver Mr. Warren, who had stopped at the scene, and the Duke was breathalyzed by police, which came back negative, and rushed back to Sandringham where he is recovering with the Queen by his side. He will be monitored by doctors for 48 hours for signs of concussion or internal injuries. The Duke of Edinburgh was clearly dazed after the crash but was uninjured, but two women inside the Kia were treated in hospital, one for a suspected broken arm, the other for an injured knee. The nine-month-old baby was unharmed. Mr. Warren immediately pulled over to help fearing that he would find the occupants of both cars dead or seriously injured. He first rushed over to the Kia which was partially in a hedge with smoke pouring from the engine, making him fear it would explode. Mr. Warren said he immediately saw a baby boy in the back of the Kia with two women in the front seats. He said, there were two women in the car and one of them had a broken arm and they were very shaken. One of them was the mother of the child and she was quite upset. The windows were down and with another chap. We got the baby out. My main concern was their car because there was a lot of smoke around it and I thought the tank might go up. 
The person in the car behind me also stopped and the passenger in that car actually took the baby in his arms after we freed it from the baby harness. Mr. Warren of Thornham, Norfolk, said he then turned his attention to the upturned Land Rover without realizing that it was being driven by Philip. He said, I got the baby out and then I got to the other car. There was an elderly gentleman in there otherwise known as the Duke of Edinburgh and I helped him to get out. I had no idea at first that it was him because I couldn't see his face. I helped him move his legs which were a bit trapped and a bit crushed. Then I saw his face and I realized who it was. He didn't seem to be in pain and I don't think he was particularly concerned but obviously he was very shocked in the circumstances. It was obviously a horrendous accident. It's just amazing that people were not more seriously injured. The door was underneath. What I thought was the door was the roof. It was all through 90 degrees. I'm not sure if I got him out through the corner of the windscreen or the sunroof. The windscreen was badly splintered but it was still in place and I prized it from the corner and freed it from the joint. He was trapped. I asked him to move his left leg and that freed his right leg and then I helped him get out. I can't remember what he said but it was nothing rude. I put my hands under his arms and helped ease him out backwards. Then I saw his face and realized who it was. He spoke to me. I can't remember the words, but it was of a person who was obviously in some shock. The Duke spoke to my wife and asked how everyone was and whether anyone was hurt. He seemed relieved. When he was told that nobody was seriously hurt, he was a very old man and he was obviously very shaken up and he responded as you would imagine the Duke of Edinburgh would. He spoke to my wife and said he was dazzled by the sun. The sun was very, very low. It was almost at horizon level and it was very strong. I was wearing sunglasses and where he was coming from he would have been looking straight into the sun. I can understand how it happened. I thought the injuries were going to be extremely serious. It was such a relief that nobody was killed. He is lucky to be alive. Mr. Warren said Philip had been driving out of a side road from the direction of Sandringham House when he pulled out on the A149 road which has a 60 miles per hour limit. He revealed that police arrived on the scene in a different car very quickly, once he had pulled Philip out. Mr. Warren added, I had his blood on my hands. It wasn't much and one of the royal people gave me a wipe. I have read in the press that both of the drivers were breath tested and they were both negative, but I didn't see it happen. I didn't hear any discussion about him going to hospital. But I was told he was being taken to Sandringham House for assessment. Mr. Warren said the prince did not thank him for his efforts, but he added, he wasn't being discourteous. He had other things on his mind for sure. Images emerged of a black Land Rover Freelander 2, which has a 5-star and cap safety rating, having rolled on its side following the crash, where it was T-boned by a blue Kia. At least five police cars and two ambulances went to the scene. The Duke was seen by a doctor at his medical facilities on the Sandringham Estate as a precaution but was given the all clear. However, he will be closely monitored for 48 hours to ensure he has no internal injuries, according to reports. Mr. Warren's account suggests there was no royal protection officer who with him, although some reports suggests there was one in the car who was also uninjured. The Duke of Edinburgh and the female driver were breathalyzed and both give negative readings. The crash happened on a stretch of the single carriageway road which has a 60 miles per hour limit and is a notorious accident spot. Phillips Land Rover was heading onto the A149 out of a private estate road leading from Sandringham House when he was dazzled by winter sunshine and struck by the Kia, which was going south. The impact on Philip's driver's side slipped the car onto the passenger's side before it spun over and slid across the single carriageway. After reaching the far edge, it then flipped again 180 degrees onto the driver's side before coming to a halt. Mr. Warren and other drivers quickly ran to help and were joined by emergency service personnel who helped pull the Duke through the sunroof. A villager who asked not to be named said, it is an extremely busy road and it is a miracle that he was not hit by another car as well. It could easily have been curtains for him, especially at his age. I guess he survived because he was in a solid Land Rover. Local driver Natalie Courtney Ely said she had experienced visibility issues on the same stretch of road in the past. I drove past about 10 minutes after it happened. She wrote on Facebook, I'm surprised he wasn't hurt. On that stretch of road the sunlight was causing major visibility issues for me so I'm sure it was for other drivers too, 
Maybe they should consider that due to this the poor visibility was more of the cause of the collision rather than speed. Broken glass and pieces of black bumper and blue trim from Philip's car was left piled up at the side of the road tonight. A turning off the A149 to the east leads to the village of West Newton, and a private estate road to the west leads past St. Felix Chapel, a British Orthodox church. Astonishingly, the site is just 30 miles from where the Duke was involved in another crash 23 years ago, which rode off a Mercedes and injured another motorist. Witness Nick Cobb arrived at the scene shortly after yesterday's collision. He told BBC News, a couple of cars coming towards us flashed their headlights. The first vehicle we saw was a Sandringham Estate Discovery police car which is a plain car but with blue flashing lights. There was quite a bit of debris on the road so we had to go into the middle of the road and go past slowly. I saw a 4x4 on its side and a car next to it in a hedge. Six or eight ordinary cars all parked round with people helping, then just next to that a normal police car directing traffic. I couldn't tell you whether, Prince Philip, was in or out of the vehicle that point. I'd say he was in. I didn't know it was him at the time. The Duke is expected to be intensely monitored by medics for the next 48 hours to ensure he has no internal injuries, such as a potentially deadly bleed on the brain. Dr. Nick Scrivine, president of the Society for Acute Medicine, told The Mirror, they will have to keep an eye on him overnight because the risk for this will be over the next 24 to 48 hours. This is not a minor event for a 97-year-old. Another woman drove past where the crash happened at around 3.40 p.m. I saw a black, 4x4 type car on its side and me and my son were like oh my word, that doesn't look good. Luckily it was just sort of on the side of the road. The road wasn't closed in any way. Obviously it looked quite smashed in. I'm quite amazed he, the Duke, is okay actually. One man, who gave his name only as George, was driving through Sandringham when he saw a black Land Rover coming up on one of the junctions. I saw who it was, he told the Times. They often drive round the estate. I followed him up and when I got to the junction the car was on its side. My interpretation is that it was struck on the side. Maybe as he's pulled out onto the A149, the Duke was there with three or four police officers. With the Queen's consort in his 98th year there may be calls from some for the Duke to give up driving. Prince Charles has previously revealed he was always worried about his father's determination to keep on driving into old age. In 2014 he met Ivor Thomas, a D-Day veteran, whose 61-year-old son, Philip told Charles that his father insisted on driving despite being in a wheelchair. The prince replied, so does my father. I'm always worried, before gesturing towards Mr. Thomas and asking, but his eyesight's all right? Figures show that in 2018, the number of drivers aged over 70 referred by the DVLA for extra testing increased by 20 percent. Under UK driving laws, people have to reapply for their license once they turn 70. After that, they have to submit a new application every three years. But Edmund King, AA president, said, Young, predominantly male, drivers are much more likely to crash within six months of passing their test than older drivers within six months of hanging up their keys. Older drivers often self-restrict their driving by not driving at night and only driving on familiar roads. The decision to hang up your keys is a tough one but should be based on personal advice from your GP and family rather than being based on some arbitrary age. The Archbishop of York tweeted a prayer for Prince Philip following the accident. He wrote, Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Philip Duke of Edinburgh. Endow him with thy Holy Spirit, enrich him with thy heavenly grace, prosper him with all happiness, and bring him to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. He later added, God of love and compassion reach out with your peace to the people who were in the car involved in the traffic accident with Prince Philip's vehicle. Amen. Norfolk police said officers were called to the A149 at Sandringham just before 3 p.m. on Thursday after a Land Rover and a Kia were involved in a collision. The male driver of the Land Rover was uninjured. The female driver of the Kia suffered cuts while the female passenger sustained an arm injury, both requiring hospital treatment, the force said. 
We can confirm both casualties from the Kia have been treated at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Kingsland and have since been discharged. The roads remained open and both vehicles were recovered a short time later. It is force policy to breath test drivers involved in collisions. We can confirm both drivers were breath tested and provided negative readings. Buckingham Palace said. The Duke of Edinburgh was involved in a road traffic accident with another vehicle this afternoon. The Duke was not injured. The accident took place close to the Sandringham estate. Local police attended the scene. The spokeswoman would not comment on suggestions Philip was traveling with a passenger, who is likely to have been his close protection officer. The prince is known to regularly drive himself around the 20,000-acre estate which has been his main home since his retirement was announced. He was pictured enjoying a solo spin around Balmore lies recently as September last year. The Duke has been staying with the Queen at Sandringham since Christmas. He retired from public life in August 2017 after completing 22,219 solo engagements since 1952. Philip has encountered a handful of relatively minor health issues in recent years including undergoing a hip operation in May 2018 and suffering a bladder infection the year before. He most recently prompted speculation surrounding his health when he chose not to join the rest of the royal family for the traditional Christmas Day church service at Sandringham. In response a royal source said, The Duke is in perfectly good health, he is just spending the day privately. He was last seen at the Queen's annual festive lunch at Buckingham Palace in December. In June 2017 he was admitted at the urging of a doctor after a battle with a bladder infection. The condition forced the Duke into hospital twice in 2012, including once after he stood by the Queen's side for a cold, rain-lashed Thames pageant marking Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee. Philip married Elizabeth in 1947 and has been by his wife's side throughout her long reign. In November 2017 Philip and the Queen marked 70 years of marriage their platinum anniversary, with a black tie dinner for friends and family at Windsor Castle. Since his retirement last year, Philip has had more time to enjoy carriage driving, which has been one of his favorite pastimes since the 1970s. He raced carriages near Norfolk before going on to represent Britain at several World and European Championships. But the Duke has not been immune to other scrapes. He was involved in a crash which wrote off a Mercedes and injured another motorist 23 years ago, just 30 miles from his latest accident, Mail Online can reveal. The collision, which took place on a cold January morning in 1996, as echoes of today's events in which the prince was involved in a collision near his Sandringham estate. Patrick Danes, then 48, had been driving through Brandon, Suffolk when, after stopping at a pedestrian crossing, he experienced the Duke's Range Rover smash into the back of his Mercedes. Then in 2010, he injured his ankle when his horse-drawn carriage hit a tree stump on the Windsor estate. It was a minor injury and he didn't even go to hospital. A Buckingham Palace spokeswoman said at the time, He is fine. Tonight, Mr. Danes, 71, described the shock incident to Mail Online, saying, The Prince's Range Rover came into the back of my Mercedes while I was waiting at a pedestrian crossing. The accident caused considerable damage. I never saw my Mercedes again afterwards. A female groom who was in the carriage went to hospital with an elbow injury.